You want to get one of these right here, huh? Well, you came to the right place. Today, I'm giving you the best tips and tricks, no matter what character you use and how to find them. We're going to look at where statistically is the best place and the monsters that are most likely to drop them. And then at the end, I'm going to give you my opinion from years of experience and looking this stuff up here on where you should really get out and farm and find those Shakos. So we'll go tips and tricks first, just generally for all different types of characters. I just have a sorceress right here just to kind of point a couple things out here and there. But uh, these will be for the sorcerers and for a lot of other characters as well. First of all, you want to get a little bit of magic find at least early on. Now, a good way I like to do it is take a helmet that has three open sockets in it, plug, plug some topazes in it, preferably some three perfect topazes, get that 74% magic find. Or actually, it's 72, I suppose, if my math is correct. But once you uh, get that, that's a good amount. Because we'll take a look at this graph right up over here. A lot of people have seen it already. But it is the uh, Magic Find Diminishing Return graph. The blue one you see goes up at a 45 degree angle, finding more magic uh, items. But if you're hunting for uniques like the Harlequin's Crest, you see it tapers off very quickly. Over four or 500, it gets almost flat until it is almost literally exactly flat at seven, eight, 900, stuff like that. So we're not really worrying about that far down. That's way down the road. Uh, you're not gonna have that much magic find if you're hunting for a Shaco. But um, the first bit of magic find is incredibly important. In my opinion, a three topaz helm is a great option because early on there, it's tough to get really anything, in my opinion, that's more valuable than that initial magic find on a helmet. You could also go ahead and do four topazes in an armor. But in my opinion, getting more cast rate will speed up your magic find uh, run so much that I don't want to get rid of that cast rate early on. And then you'll eventually maybe get a Viper Magi. You don't want to get rid of that resistance and more faster cast rate and the one to all skill on a Viper Magi and so on and so on, different armors like that. So I feel that uh, on the helmet, it's more appropriate to put the topazes in than to, to use up your body armor slot. Now, as I mentioned on that armor faster cast rate, if you are a, a sorceress getting more faster cast rate, it'll obviously with any any caster in the entire game, cast rate will benefit your damage because you can cast your spells faster, but also you can get there faster if you're a sorceress. If you are not a sorceress and you do not have that teleport skill inherently on your character, make sure you get yourself a teleport staff. That way you can teleport out two places faster you can pull your mercenary away from danger by teleporting away and he'll come to you you can get uh, past walls or gaps that you wouldn't be able to get through otherwise you can get those uh, staffs with teleport on them a popular place is act two from drag nine because you can run in and out of town resetting his inventory till you get one or ormus in act three is another popular place in order to get your teleport staff early on even as early as normal so early on in the game you really don't want to push too high on magic find just because it generally will sacrifice a ton of kill speed and damage unless you have that magic find uh down here in small charms which i do not have on this character small charms or something like a geeds like this will give you more magic find but sacrificing a ton of room up here um is kind of gonna be tough because you'll lose things like faster cast rate you'll lose skills and all res um, you know, you, you definitely, uh, want to have your spirit shield over here, not some, you know, what is it? Malabrig's shield or whatever that has magic find on it. Spirit shield, the amount of power you gain and survivability you gain from all the other gear. So don't push too high on the magic find or don't press too hard to get more magic find. Cause right here, even on this character, I just have 79% magic find. Um, if I did have the, uh, a three socketed Topaz, uh, helmet up here. You could add another 72 on top of that, and that would be perfectly fine at 140 or 150-ish magic find. That is a super solid amount, especially early on when you're magic finding. It'll be perfectly fine. So right here, we're at Silas Finn's drop odds calculator, and you can definitely go ahead and uh, hunt champions if you want to. Now, the thing is about champions, you can find definitely all different kinds of other monsters, but if you're hunting champions in the level 85 areas in Diablo 2 Resurrected, you can find any item in the entire game. But because you can find every item in the entire game, then you have uh, kind of a lower chance almost of finding the Shaco. Now, because of the way that probability works, actually, if you sort this by probability, you see here, I just put in as if we had the three Topaz Helm on, you're hunting around in a game by yourself in hell for champions. Right here, we got uh, rogues, archers, these mages, and go ahead and look at the locations of all these. You do notice these are actually all in act one because the act one monsters are kind of like a lower uh monster level 
they can drop less items, but because they can drop the Shaco, but they have a lower pool of total uh, items that they can drop, you're going to have a better chance of actually finding the Shaco. So uh, and when you look around here, it's all uh, stony fields, underground passage, all of these higher ones in the 61 and 65,000, which is kind of a high odds, you know, but you're going to, you could kill a ton of these uh, and the monsters are incredibly weak, so you can kill them very fast. So keep that into consideration. We're still going here all, uh, here we got uh, places in the tower. And then we're jumping into Act 2, catacombs, sewers, and all this different kind of stuff. And mixed in here too is the uh, other tower levels, different monsters and that. So you see right now we're getting lower here, but it's still Act 1, Act 2, and stuff like that. So obviously, um, and these are technically non-85 areas because the uh, monsters there are actually lower level. When you get in the 85 areas, you could find things like D-Webs and Griffins, but you can technically have a slightly lower chance of finding the Shaco. We'll go ahead and jump to the worst odds, but you see here even one in 74,000 compared to one in 65,000. It's not really that crazy even of a difference. So personally, I wouldn't target areas outside of the 85 areas specifically to only try to necessarily get a Shaco. Definitely outside of 85 areas, you can still farm them and get tons of good items. I do it all the time, but if you're thinking, oh, I'm specifically going to get a Shaco outside of the 85 areas because the odds are so much better, they're not that much better. They're only a little bit better. So when we get to the boss part, I will kind of show you uh, some of the best places and I'll teleport around. For right now, I'm just going to throw a list up here of the 85 areas because in general, it depends on your build and uh, what type of damage you do, elemental, physical, fire, cold, and stuff like that, which one you're going to want to farm. There's all different kinds. I'll just, you know, the pits, the, the chaos sanctuary, ancient tunnels. There's some new 85 areas now in Diablo 2 Resurrected. Like I said, I'm going to throw the list right up over here. You can take a quick look at it, screenshot it. I'll try to remember to put a link down in the description as well. But 85 areas, any of the level 85 areas, whichever ones you can farm the absolute fastest are ones where you can definitely find yourself your Shaco quick. And quick is obviously a relative term. So now I have it set to bosses and I have it with the exact same setup here. Just you're in a game by yourself with this much magic find. And obviously having more people in the game and more magic find, you'll increase your odds. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it like this just for comparison purposes. Now, first of all here, Andario, we got one in 1100. So that can be 1100 runs is quite a few, but you could always find it or faster or even slower. And as you get more magic find, you will have a better chance. So from Mephisto here, it's 1 in 11.88. So it's it's almost identical drop odds here. Let's go ahead and bump this up to 200 and see how much this affects the drop odds from there. You can see now instead of 1100, it's 1 in 860 and 74. So you see Andario and Mephisto have almost identical drop odds. If you come down other bosses such as Diablo, and a bail. We got Dural here, Neelithak. Neelithaks are actually way lower than I anticipated even, but after that, they get really, really high. It's They almost end up being the same as like champions for some of these, like the Summoner and Blood Raven and some stuff like that, which those are not efficient to farm really at all. The Summoner you're gonna be going after for keys sometimes anyways, but really even uh, Neelithak for keys too, but Dural, bail and uh, Diablo specifically aren't particularly great to farm to specifically try to get your Shaco. Um, if you're taking out uh, Diablo or Bale at the end of a Chaos run or at the end of Bale run where you're going to get experience, might, might as well take out Bale, might as well take out Diablo anyways. You can definitely find them from there, but sp to specifically farm those exact monsters as fast as you can for this item. Not necessarily the most efficient, in my opinion. So we'll take a look at definitely the bosses that are the fastest, uh, Andariel and Mephisto. First of all, we'll go take a look at Andariel, and this is on single player. So you can see the map up here in the corner. Now, this kind of works for every single time you come down in here with some small exceptions once in a while. But I'm pointing up at the mini map here. You see, here's the initial tile, and you're leaving in this direction. When you leave the initial tile, you will always turn right when leaving the waypoint. So you're gonna come up here and you're gonna turn right. And it's right here on this particular map. Sometimes it will be much further. Sometimes it'll be super close like this. But on this one, it is very close down to the next level. Once you're down to the next level, this is more of a guess and check. That's why it's all exposed. I teleported around looking for it. Where is it at? Where is it at? And this one was way over here. I didn't go through the entire map quite. I didn't go way over here, but I'd ha I actually ended up teleporting around almost the entire thing. So a sorceress is going to be just uh, astronomically faster for farming this rather than another character. Really, if you don't have a sorceress, you wouldn't necessarily 
farm this location because it's just so difficult. Now, once you're down here, um, it, it is beneficial to kind of clean out some of these guys over here. I actually ended up, uh, I'm dual spec Hydra with the uh, orb thing. I just decided to rock it because people do love this, even though generally I wouldn't do this. People just love using this type of build. So we'll come over here and we'll throw down a bunch of Hydras and they'll rip down and dial pretty darn quick. In fact, didn't drop anything there. But um, she does have a weakness to fire, but you do need a way to get rid of all of these carvers or whichever name that they have down in this particular area. They are immune to fire, so if you are fire, just keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and jump to Mephisto now, and I'll show you some tips and tricks kind of to going after Mephisto. Now, when you come down to the Durance of Hate level 2, uh, the first thing you need to know, um, just think of this map as like right and left. The way down, 9 out of 10 times, will be on the left half of the map. Sometimes it could be almost out exactly straight, or it could be directly to the left. This on single player, once again, like I said, so this one, you can come over here. You can see I teleported around looking for the exit, and boom, it was right here to the left. Most of the times, it'll be like this, or it very well could be way out here, and you could be teleporting way out here looking for it. Just stick to the left wall as much as you can until you eventually do find it, and maybe it'll be right here or something. But like I said for mine, it's right up here just to the left, all handy dandy. Now, once you're down here, you see I do not have a mercenary. If you're budget early on, Mephisto will absolutely slap whatever mercenary you have. And there's a trick that's actually way easier to do if you don't have a mercenary. So that is why I don't have a mercenary, even though the insight would help my mana regeneration. I do not have that. Generally, early on budget, if you're hunting a Shaco, you're, you're obviously like a budget character. Just skip any of the other monsters down here. A lot of people will clear them. But when you see that and they recommend clearing them, they already have kind of good gear. They already have their Shaco, they already have Hoto or something like that, or Rakdos Mesh usually when they're clearing all the other monsters. Because the Hydras do a ton of damage that they're casting on you. And they can also just mana burn you uh, and stuff like that. You see uh, sometimes some of them, the uh, champion ones will be immune to whatever you're using. So generally I just skip them. I get Mephisto to go ahead and follow me over. And Mephisto cannot cross this river of blood right here. You see, I'm at a distance to where he cannot target me. And, but I can definitely still attack Mephisto. So just go ahead, and if you're a Hydra, you just go ahead and cast your Hydras all around Mephisto. If you're a Blizzard, drop Blizzards on her. If you're a Meteor Fireball, drop Meteors and shoot Fireballs. Whatever you're using, Lightning, you know. The only thing that won't work for this really is a Nova. If you're a Sorceress, if you're another character, this is not necessarily the best way in order to get a Shaco. Because it's, like I said, if you don't have Teleport, it's incredibly hard to get down here. A normal Teleport Staff, you'll lose everything. Here we go, boom, Bramble Mitts, I dropped some uh, Laying of Hands. Not a bad drop, I suppose. One of the go-tos for melee characters. Back here, I do generally recommend hit this chest. It is a, uh, a type of, I don't know if it's technically a super chest, I'm pretty sure it is, but um, one time I did get a Burr Rune out of that, out of complete luck, like five or six or eight years ago, I don't remember what it is now. But definitely hit that. There'll be a ton of stuff out of there, gems, charms, and all kinds of stuff like that. So for bosses, those are the two best, and Darl and Mephisto. So now I'll go at my actual recommendation. Really, if you can, if you're a sorceress early on, go with moat tricking Mephisto because Mephisto can drop a bunch of different other really great items as well. Things that Andario cannot drop because of the monster level. Things like uh, more the most specific one, Arachnid's Mesh, which is really, really valuable at the beginning of a ladder. Everybody needs one. Everybody wants one. That you can get that from Mephisto and not Andario. Now, Andario is not bad. I would I run Andario all the time as well. But if I had to say which one is really better than the other and I would really recommend, I would really recommend Mephisto. And just remember, these are odds. These are not definitive. If you run uh, Mephisto 874 times with 200% with magic find, you will get a Shaco for sure. Because even I did uh, like a thousand of each Mephisto and Andario and did not get a Shaco on single player when I first started out. So it is not 100% definitive, but this is it is going to be the absolute best way. Now for any other character that is not a sorceress, places in Act 1. Look at all any of these places in Act 1 here that uh, they all have these champions that have the highest drop odds. They're incredibly weak monsters in Act 1. So any of these areas in Act 1 are great to farm, killing stuff on the way down to uh, Andario in the Catacombs, killing stuff in the Tower on the way down to do Countess runs. So really what I would recommend 
is maybe not even necessarily hunt specifically the Shaco. Pick an area where you're going to hunt for other stuff where you can also get the Shaco and such as, like I said, the, the tower or going down to Andario. The third, and this is going to be a pretty vague tip on area, but pick the level 85 area that you can clear the fastest, such as the pits in Act 1 or the ancient tunnels. It's going to be the least, uh, accurate one because you, you're going to be finding a ton of items but really to get yourself a shako finding a great item early especially in the ladder and then trading it is going to be probably the fastest possible way in every instance to get any item in the entire game because you can't pick and choose what you find now if you're on single player or you just never trade or you just online and never play with anybody you're going to have to go ahead and try to find it pretty much from uh, mephisto or andario so a few months back, YouTube cut the ad revenue by a third. So if you want to make it possible for me to keep making videos and streaming here on this channel, please consider becoming a channel member. If you can, link right down in the description or there's a join button next to the subscribe button. So, hey, thanks a lot for the support, everybody. Peace out and keep slaying.